Howdy. So one um, other little tech tip. This is more of a Blackboard orientation, so you know where to go to find all your materials. Um, I showed you a little bit of that when I talked about how to upload your assignments for your labs, but um, we're going to go a little more depth now. So I have been using Blackboard for 15 years or so. I can't remember exactly, but I know I used it as an undergrad. I've been teaching with it for seven years and I still learn something new every day. Um, so if you have other tips to add to this, please share. I'm happy to add things to the video or if you wanna make a video showing people cool tricks that I don't know, that's awesome. But um, here's a few things that will help you to navigate our Blackboard class, okay? So the first off, um, I changed your landing page. So when you, okay, so I should probably back up. Let's back up. When you log in, your username and password are provided to you when you register for the class. It's usually the first letter of your name, your first name, then your whole last name, and then the day that you were born. So my name is Amanda Miller, right? So it'd be A. Miller, and I was born on January 16th, so it would be A. Miller 16, okay? And that's your, your um, login. The password is usually the last word, your social security number, I think. Okay, so that'll get you in, and then you should see this list of my courses here. Um, one of the features of Blackboard that's kind of neat and a little bit hidden is you can change which, I mean, I have a lot of courses. These are just the ones that I'm actively working with right now. Um, eventually, I'll want to take some of them off. Maybe. I don't know. I have a lot. Um, if you don't see the course you're looking for right away, you can click this this wheel and it will give you a menu showing every course. It might be a couple of pages. In my case, it's about four but uh, should be less for you guys. Um, it'll show you every class that's been associated with you. You can then choose to display them by clicking the boxes. You can even choose what to display, okay? So for our course, it's gonna say summer 2020 CH142. That's the one to click on. So what do you do? You're gonna see this. Well, actually, there. You're gonna see this, okay? And so, the announcements are right front and center, so you can check out what I've said. Um, those also sometimes come to your email, um, but you can read that by clicking here. I think that you will have the assignments that I have given to you populated in the to-do list. That's my hope, anyway. This is a new feature for me. Um, as well as this alert of past due things should also help you to manage your schedule. Um, remember that I do accept late work, so just because it's in this box does not mean that you can't do it. Um, so what I'm hoping is that because these all say zero, even though I do have assignments in here, because I think I'm the instructor, so it doesn't show me what's due since it's not due for me. I'm hoping what you guys will see is like if you quick click on next week, there should be about two or three assignments that are already in there. This is the first of July, but um, there should be more. So anyway, uh, if this doesn't work, let me know. And if you're willing to kind of get together and troubleshoot on Zoom for a few minutes, maybe we can mess with this and get it to function the way I want. I want to give you guys as many tools as you can have in order to manage um, all of the different assignments we're gonna have. Um, this is also a, something I thought would populate with the assignments. Um, I might be using that wrong, but um, it also might be something that you have to set up. I'm not quite sure. So you might have to experiment a little bit. This is also where you can make tutoring appointments. My understanding is we're gonna have online tutoring available. Um, so I, you, know, you can click there and schedule it that way. Um, and then sort of this gives you the overall grade. This may or not may not be completely accurate because it won't count like work that's missing necessarily unless I've put a zero in there. And it, it might not count some of the work you've already done if it's not graded. The real way to tell what your grades are is there's gonna be a, there is a button right here that says grades. This isn't gonna take me anywhere interesting because I haven't done anything, I'm not a student, but 
um, it kind of gives you a list of, you know, everything and it's organized by module. So, um, module one is the first two weeks. Module two is the second two weeks. So weeks one and two, three and four. Module three is weeks five and six, and then we're done. Module four is of course the lab. So that runs throughout the whole semester. Um, as the syllabus describes, you have to get a minimum number of points in order to pass in each category. All right, so that's basically a D in each category. Oh, maybe you haven't found the syllabus yet. Let me tell you where that is. I skipped over it entirely. So we went over the home button, but the start here button has some very valuable information. I'm not entirely done with this yet, but um, so when you look at it, there will be more here, but what you'll see is kind of a brief introduction of what you need to do to be prepared for the class. Um, and then you'll have the whole syllabus. Okay. So if you were wondering, golly, how does grading work in this class? What is she talking about? That's going to be in the syllabus along with what materials do you need? Um, what is going to be required for lab? What dates are we going to be doing lab? Um, I try to put as much information as you might need in the syllabus. So please refer to it frequently. Uh, one handy way to navigate is this little table of contents, right? So this, you go show document outline. And if all I'm interested in is the grading, oh look, I found it, okay? So what this says is you must receive a minimum of 150 points in every module to pass. That's a D guys, because each module is worth up to 250. So if you do the math, 60% of 250 is 150 points, okay? So this gives you a, no a notion of how much work you have to do to get the grade you want. If all you need is a C, you can stop when you get to 175 points in that module and you'll get a C. If you really want an A, you can do more work and get more points, okay? So your grade is entirely up to you. Um, generally speaking, more work equals more points, right? Um, then basically at the end of the semester, I'm going to add all those points together and these are going to be your final grades. Remembering, of course, that everybody has to get a D in each category. Well, not everybody. You have to get a D or better in each category in order to pass, okay? So in traditional systems, that may not be what you're used to. You might be used to a situation where you could really ignore large portions of work and still get a good grade. Uh, by doing really, really well in other sections. That doesn't work in this class, partly because of the way I've set up the grading system, but also because of the simple fact that everything we learn in the beginning, middle, and end is connected, okay? And so if you've missed a part of that, it makes it really, really tough to, um, to do well in the latter parts. All right, so back to the grade book. You can see your total for each module here, and you just wanna get that as high as you need to get whatever grade you're after, right? So like I said, if you wanted to see, you can get to 175 in each one and you're done, okay? It's, it's I think, pretty straightforward. Um, if you are looking at the grade book, you can see the totals. Um, and then below that, you see individual assignments. I haven't gotten all of, all of them up there yet, but this is what's up there right now. When there's a grade, so right now this, this line means that there is no grade. It is worth a total of up to four points, all right? When there is a number here, that's when I have graded it. So if it says zero out of four and you thought you did it, that means something glitchy happened. Either something didn't get uploaded or I can't see the file or gosh, you know, your internet crashed and it didn't actually upload anything. Whatever the situation is, remember I take late work. So it's not the end of the world. Just go in and do it. Um, if I've already graded it, it says zero out of four, it's a good idea to shoot me an email if I haven't regraded it in a couple of days. Don't do it the same minute you put it in there. I will be checking our grade center pretty frequently, but you know, if it's been a couple days since you updated something and I haven't regraded it, feel free to reach out. Okay. Um, don't send me 45 emails. One is enough. <laughs> okay. If you don't get a response in two days or so, you can email again, but I'm, I usually don't miss things that often, okay? Um, so that's the Grade Center. It also kind of helps you to see what's coming up, all right? So it tells you the dates that everything is due. 
not quite everything, everything that is in assignment in Blackboard. So this is not going to include quizzes, which are in Mastering Chemistry. Um, well, it might, I might be able to set that up. I guess we'll experiment with that a little bit. But anyway, it's, it's not going to include every single thing you have to do, okay? But it does include all the assignments and tests that are built into Blackboard. Okay. In order to know what every single thing that is due is, you're going to want to go to the next tab, which is modules. Oh, and by the way, on the start here tab, there will be more videos shortly. They're uploading to YouTube, which takes a while. Okay. But anyway, so in order to know what is due in any given module, you actually want to click on it. All right. And so I showed this in the other video, but um, for module four. So this is the beginning of module one. So we have a to-do list right here. This is also in your syllabus. Um, I'm not sure which one is more printable for you, but um, it's a good idea to like print this out or copy and paste it into a reminder on your calendar or something. So you can check off things as you go. The one in the syllabus actually has check boxes here. Um, sadly, I can't do that in Blackboard, but this is your list for the first week from 7 8 to 7 15 this is what you have to do everything not just what's in the grade book but everything here okay it tells you when to read it tells you what videos to watch all of it the textbook is your reading um there's going to be a button here that says mastering chemistry you can access the e-text there if you have a code if you have any difficulty setting up Mastering Chemistry, reach out to me ASAP so we can get that situated, but hopefully you're familiar with it from 141. Okay, so the first, after the to-do list, the next thing is a little pretest. okay? This is worth five points no matter what um, answers you give, as long as you give valid answers for each question. It should only take you a few minutes, but you're gonna go in here and answer some questions from 141. So we have an idea of where you stand and where you might need to review, okay? Um, don't stress about that, okay? It's a pretest, not a big deal. It's pass fail. So as long as you try, you'll get some points. The next thing is a video. There's a baby Yoda. Check it out. Okay. Um, I try to make the videos as fun as I can. I know it's a lot and you're gonna get tired of my voice and I'm sorry but it is a really good way of communicating a lot of information really quickly. So we will, we will be seeing a lot of videos. You will see a lot of me. <laughs> I hope that we will also see a lot of um, each other. I hope that other students will wanna chime in on things and, and participate in the discussion that way. We'll see. Anyway, so you'll watch this video and I explained in the video that you wanna have your notes packet with you while you do. It is important to actually take physical notes if you have any ability to do so. Um, it's easier to take them if you have a printout of the notes. Um, I don't know if the libraries are gonna be open or not to print. I hope so. Um, but if you have difficulty accessing a printer, please let me know and we'll try to find a way for you to do that. But you're going to go print the Google Slides for Chapter 13 and then you watch the video and you follow along and take notes. Because at some point I'm going to ask you to upload some photos of those notes, um, especially the parts in the video where I say, okay, fill this in and we'll look at it together later. Uh, so there's a definitions page, there's a uh, couple of random questions sprinkled throughout that I ask you to answer. So you gotta watch the videos to find out where those are. And then part of this little learning check is uploading um, photos of your notes. Please see the tech tip video about using Google to scan your document if, if you haven't already watched that. So that's what you'll do and you're gonna upload it there and you're gonna answer those questions. You get a couple of few points. And that lets you know if you're on track or not. And then you keep going. Okay, so I haven't finished populating this yet. We're gonna have, we're gonna have some more stiff. Um, but that brings you basically up to chapter 13.4, that solubility rules uh, video does. Then you're, there's a quiz you need to take in Mastering Chemistry. This is due before our first synchronous session. Okay, and this is basically to help you prepare for the worksheet or the project that we're gonna do together, all right? 
And then here's our synchronous meeting. It's that Friday. This may change, as I said, people have different schedules, we'll see, but it's important that you come. You get more from one of those sessions than, than double the amount of studying on your own. So I really hope you make the time to come, okay? The next kind of assignment is the discussion board. So I'm gonna show you that really quickly. And so you'll go to discussion. I know, it's really creative. Um, so this actually in the start here area, I ask you to go to the, and introduce yourself. Uh, you can do that using an audio file, you can type it up, you can, um, I don't know, send a carrier pigeon? No, that might take too long. You can do a video. However you want to introduce yourself is great. Um, what you'll do though is you'll come to the forum and cr create thread and then name it. Okay, and I'm gonna put a cute little picture in, I'm gonna upload my little video. So in order to upload videos, you can insert the media here. And so what I did is actually have a YouTube, I'm just gonna go copy that from my channel. And um, it's just a YouTube video. I think we clicked this one, I'm just guessing. I have no idea. Yep, that worked. Okay. Um, oh, it picks iframe. Cool. So anyway, that's my YouTube. There's my introduction. I've inserted that. You go back to the discussion board and you can see, um, I can type here if I want to. I'm going to put a little picture just to demonstrate how to do it. Um, I like this one. This one's fun. It's a handy thing. Um, it's a handy thing to add an image description. This is helpful for people who um, are on screen readers. Oh my gosh, I can't spell. <laughs> and so you can make this window bigger so you can see what you're doing. Um, and I'm just gonna, you know, make a few comments in this and then I will click submit and then all of you will be able to see this material. All right. So you guys can either type out your answers to my questions um, or do a video or do an audio clip or there's a variety of tools you can use to upload here. Um, so play with it a little bit. Another feature in um, in our discussion forums and also when you're doing tests and other things like that in Blackboard is this math editor. Um, oh look, you could have uploaded YouTube that way as well. Um, the math editor allows you to type fancy math language. And if you're, if you're trying to type out fractions or logarithms or exponents or anything funny, use this feature please it is so much easier to read so there's tabs along the top you got fancy symbols we love our fancy symbols right um fractions okay and so look there's pi yay so use this it's very very nice uh in terms of me being able to read what you're actually trying to type um this is a joke because you matter it's a chemistry joke oh you think about it you are made of matter right yeah, there's an awesome shirt that says um, something like, you matter unless, how does it go? Mass, unless you are times the speed of light squared or something, then you're forced. I don't know. I can't remember how it goes. It's a funny shirt, though. I saw it one time. Anyway, so that's how you're going to add discussion posts. And um, I'm just going to submit this. I can edit it later if I want to by going here and clicking mm, edit, open. I think it's open. You can also comment um, on people's threads. So you would go here, this is what you'll see, and you can reply. Oh, there's the edit button. You can reply, you can quote it, um, whatever you wanna do to um, interact with your fellow classmates is a good idea. Okay, hopefully that helps, but as always, if you have questions, 
please let me know.